Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest IV! Since last time, I reloaded a save file so that way we can get over here to get the Seed of Life. You can't do that yet in the NES version, you have to wait until later in the game. And since last time I got all the equipment that I was telling you guys about, let's put that in the bag there. But yeah, I got everyone up to level 8 while getting all that money there, so take a look at what we got here. New spells, and, well I already had Dazzle, but that's for Chris, or Kiro there. We also learned the Evac spell and Bounce. The Evac spell sends Elena to her room. No, no, that uh, warps you out of a dungeon, like the outside spell from the previous Dragon Quest games. And the Bounce spell uh, uh, is like the Reflect spell in the Final Fantasy games. It casts a spell on you, bounces back to the caster. Got a new enemy here, Fungul. I don't know if that's supposed to be some kind of pun, but uh, they are susceptible to sleep or, well, snooze in this version of the game. Uh, Boria does not learn sleep in the NES version. So, yeah, they change a couple of the spells around, but not too much. Enough to make things a little more useful. So let's go get that, what was it, golden bracelet or, ah, uh, whatever it was called. We gotta get something down here. But anyway, we got a couple more new enemies here. Bedbugs, who are ironically susceptible to sleep, or snooze. So we want to use that on them. Vampire bats, if I ran into a large enough group of them, I might uh, want to cast Dazzle on them. Because you can run into like five or six of them. Dazzle would be really good on them. Because it it reduces their hit percentage by about a third or so. so that's pretty nice against a large group of enemies. But here, in that battle, not so much. Now, what I'm doing throughout the game, just to sh share my plan with you, Instead of doing, like, a mass grinding session like I did in Dragon Warrior 2 and 3, what I'm doing now in this LP is I'm going to be spreading it out a lot more, like breaking it down into like 5 or 10 minute chunks of micro grinding. So that way, you know, we do it when we have new equipment coming up. So, well, it just makes life a little easier on your patience, I guess. And here we got another new enemy, Fire Spirit. Guess what element they're weak to? Well, okay, they're not weak to it, but uh, they are susceptible to crack. And you want to use that on them because if you use a physical attack on them, well, first, they have a really high physical evade. And second, if sometimes when they evade, they'll split up and make another one of themselves. So you want to avoid that. Try to use crack on them if you can, or kill them in one hit with Elena there. That works too. So yeah, what I'm doing with the grinding here, because like you could get through the majority of this chapter at like level, I'd say six or seven, maybe eight. You could do that if you really wanted to and just, you know, skimp on some of the equipment. I've done that before. My first test run, I did very minimal grinding, so you can get away with it. But at the end, you're gonna have to do a whole bunch of grinding anyway in order to beat the boss at the end of the chapter. So, I figured, you know, let's we might as well spread it out so that way I can make the earlier parts of the chapter a little easier. And here we got a new item to the Dragon Quest series, the Magic Water. I'll explain. That is like an ether from the Final Fantasy games. And here's a new enemy, Blinkster. They are pretty much immune to most spells. So, crack, not going to be too useful against them. They can crack, cast crack once and then they'll be out of MP. So now we're, we can pretty much go all out if we really want to. And yeah, see they don't have enough MP to cast any more spells. If you had the Fizzle spell, which is like the stop spell from the NES version, uh, you can cast that on them, but Kirill doesn't learn that. So we can't do that. But let's say you met, them up, met up with them in another chapter, you could do that if you wanted to. So that's pretty nice. But anyway, yeah, we want to heal up after that one. Whew. Yeah, you run into those guys and in like a large group of enemies, they can really pack a wallop on you. Might be a good idea to just have everyone defend until most of them cast crack. And another new enemy, Crested Viper. I think that's all, well, almost all the new enemies around here. Yeah, there's a couple I didn't show off, but oh well. But anyway, what I want to do is put the Crested Vipers to sleep and attack the bed bugs. Now, Cut Sap is basically like the Sap spell, except it hits all 
party members or just a group of enemies, and it only removes half of their current defense. So I'm not a huge fan of that spell. I prefer to remove all their defense with a single sap spell, but you can do it however you want. And yeah, the uh, Crested Vipers are susceptible to crack. Uh, pretty much everything is susceptible to it. There's very only there's very few enemies that are immune to it, like the mages there, or uh, the blinksters, whatever they were called. All right, we found an armlet of transmutation. Oh, huh, there we go. No boss fight or anything. Okay, well, what I want to do... Ah, oh, yeah, they call it a golden armband, just like in the first game. Or the NES version. It's a golden bracelet. I want to use the evac spell to get out of here. Now, in order to make the exchange, it has to be nighttime, just like the ransom note said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk back to Vraenor, and then just walk around the area a little while until it's nighttime, and then we can make the exchange. Okay, it's nighttime, so... Let's make the ransom exchange. I'm sure everything will go as planned and they'll honor their word. Ah, there they are. Yeah, if they're not showing up there, you have to talk to the kid who has the ransom note. Otherwise, you can't do the ransom exchange for this part. No. She's not a real princess. Yes. Well, we gotta, we have to give it to them. So, oh well. All right, let's, what? No boss time? No double cross? This is a JRPG! You're supposed to double cross us! No, actually, everything just goes as planned and that's it. Yeah, nothing, nothing happens. That just seems bizarre to me. Like, I have never seen a ransom exchange, like, ever work! Like, the bad guy is supposed to double cross you. <laughs> but apparently, well, everything goes as planned and that's it. And we'll never see them again. And for rescuing her, we get the Thief's Key, which can open blue doors. All right. Not that that's incredibly useful to us right now, but, well, it will be soon enough, viewers. Soon enough. So, well, all right. It's nice that everything went as planned. In Soviet Russia, Princess rescues you. Uh, sorry, that's the best Russian accent you're going to get out of me, viewers. You know, I need to talk about more about the music in the game. I mean, just like the battle music, the town music, it's so, the town music so cheerful. I love the battle music in the game. All the world map themes, it changes from chapter to chapter. I love it. Oh, there's a market open to the south now. Hmm, maybe we should check that out. It would have been there before, but they don't tell you until now. Let's see. Ooh, I'm doing pretty good on money, but uh, I don't want to upgrade my weapons just yet, because we're going to go to the next town anyway. And we're going to buy something there. So, why bother? They're going to have better stuff over there. So. Oh, yeah. Heard about that. How's it going? Oh, so that's the market they were talking about. The bazaar. Well, maybe we should check it out. Maybe they got some good stuff. Well, let's get out of here and head on down there. How hard could the enemies possibly be? And we're still at fall. Yeah, when you, when you do that, you get restored to fall, so... Let's head on down to the bazaar. Why not? Put our skills to the test. And here we got a new enemy, Bullfinch. They're kind of a weird enemy. Oh, by the way, about fungals, they can poison you with their physical attacks sometimes, so gotta watch out for that. But yeah, uh, Bullfinch, they can sometimes start the battle asleep, and they can roll over on top of you in their sleep for a critical hit. It's like, wow. <laughs> so... What's going on? I want to get up to the teleportal to get to Endor for the tournament they were telling us about. Nuts. Yeah, King won't let us pass, so, oh well. None shall pass. Oh well, let's go check out the bazaar. They got better stuff there anyway. What's going on here? Oh, yeah, I kind of noticed it. I thought we were done with the Scottish accents from the last chapter. I guess I was wrong. Oh, well. But anyway, here we got some new weapons. I want to get the Holy Lance for Kirill there. Yeah, look at that attack power boost. And he is going to be a house. As good as Elena. That better. So, all right. And let's see. Is there anything else I want to get here? 
Oh wait, no, there's one more thing. I want to get the Poison Moth Knife eventually for Borya there. He's good attack power boost. He'll deal about as much damage as Crack, so that'll save him on some MP. It can paralyze an enemy, but for some reason the proc rate for weapons in this game seem to be very, very diluted compared to the NES version. So anything that does something like that, I mean, it's nice when it does happen, but don't expect it to happen nearly as often as the NES version. So yeah, unfortunately, not so great. Although the nice thing about it in the NES version is you can paralyze, what are they, the metal slimes. Dude, why would you put that in there in a pot you're trying to sell to me? What is wrong with you? Yeah, it reminds me of, uh, which one was that? Was that Oracle of Ages? I think that was Oracle of Ages. But uh, anyway, we get a Seed of Strength. I like to use my Seeds of Strength on Elena because she gets a weapon later on that can really take advantage of it, and she has really high agility. So that's pretty nice. Now, I'd also like to buy a new piece of armor here if I can. And I'm going to sell you the piece of horse manure. I'm not going to spike the game by throwing it away or discarding it. Why do they get so many cats around here? I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, that's nice. They enjoy cats here. It just seems a little odd that they would just let them roaming around in the desert here or something. I don't know. But anyway, now we have the money to buy the scale shield for Boria there. So best shield in the chapter for him. In fact, I think we've gotten most of the best stuff we can get in the chapter for now. I think there's a couple other things, but, uh, well, well you'll see. Oh, hey, how's it going? Well, what's going on? Is he dying, or is he uh, terminally ill? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to save the seed of agility for later there. Man, we gotta find a way to get on over there for the tournament. And they got, well, an item shop up there with that lady, but, uh, eh, nothing interesting that I care about. Although, if you didn't get a Chimera Wing, you may want to buy one, because now... Oh, nuts. We don't have the Zoom spell yet. It's like the Return spell in the previous games. But, anyway, the Chimera Wing can let you warp to any town that you've been to. So, let's return home and see what's going on with dear old Dad. How's it going? Do you really need to shut the door behind me like that? Hmm. Well, why doesn't he say something? Oh, okay. Huh. Well, I wonder what happened to him. Well, maybe we should uh, ask around. Now, just like the other sequence triggers I told you about, you have to talk to a certain person or a group of people. I don't know exactly who you have to talk to, but I do know the, the sequence. I don't know if you have to talk to every single one of them, but well, you'll see. So, yeah, he said we gotta talk to that Stark guy in the room by the back garden there, so yeah, now we have the thief's key so we can get in here. You didn't have to tell him it was your dad. Oh. Um. Well, maybe we should check it out, then. Anything interesting in the bookshelves? No, nothing particularly interesting. Oh, and they give us another Chimera Wing, so that way we can warp back to the bazaar. And here we get a Seed of Magic. It boosts your M maximum MP. I would save it for another character later in the game. So, not right now. Save that for later. But anyway, let's go talk to Joseph Stalin. I, I mean, Starling. Sorry, look at this names mixed up all the time. Okay, how's it going? Now, I think this guy is one of the ones you have to talk to. If you do not, you cannot get the birdsong nectar. So, yeah, you'll... Well, you'll see. But you can't get it. And, yeah. It, they got me on that one. They got me. I screwed up the sequence somehow. So, yeah, this one has kind of weird sequence triggers, but, well, oh well. What's going on? Oh, okay, 
so that's where we're supposed to get it. Well, okay, well, I'll check it out then. But can we get the birdsong nectar for the king? What caused him to lose his voice? Will he have anything interesting to say if we can cure him? Find out next time on Let's Play Dragon Quest IV! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!